I am Mr. Joel. Our topic for today is exothermic and endothermic reaction. At the end of this lesson, we will learn differences between exothermic and endothermic reaction. How to identify exothermic and endothermic reactions? Energy profile diagram of exothermic and endothermic reaction. Now let's go right straight into the topic. Have you ever wondered why some reactions feel hot? While others feel cold? It is because chemical reactions tend to absorb or release heat to the surrounding, meaning a chemical system either gains heat energy or loses heat energy. This gives rise to exothermic and endothermic reaction. What is an exothermic reaction and how do we identify it? Exothermic reactions are chemical reactions that release heat energy into the surroundings. In other words, they feel hot to the touch. As these reactions occur, they give off heat, often resulting in a rise in temperature. Let's say you have a reaction whose temperature was low at the beginning. Let's say at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. If the temperature increases and becomes hot to let's say about 35 degrees Celsius, it means it has released heat to the surrounding, we therefore identify the reaction as exothermic. Examples of exothermic reactions are burning of wood, rusting of iron, mixing water with acid, formation of ice cube. Now let's take a look at endothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions absorb heat energy from the surroundings. As a result, these reactions feel cold. As these reactions occur, they absorb heat, often resulting in an increase in temperature. Let's say you have a reaction whose temperature was high at the beginning. If the temperature decreases and becomes cold, it means it has absorbed heat from the surrounding. We therefore identify the reaction as endothermic. Let's take a look at some of the reactions that are endothermic. Examples of endothermic reactions are Photosynthesis Boiling and evaporation of water Dissolving salt in water Melting of ice Before we see the energy profile diagram for this reaction, Let's understand what energy profile diagram is and its parts. So what's the energy profile of a reaction? It's a graph which shows how the energy of a system changes as the reaction progresses. Now take a close look at the graph on your screen. The vertical axis represents the overall energy or enthalpy of the reactants, while the horizontal axis is the reaction coordinate. The highest point of the graph is called the activation complex or transition state. It is where breaking and formation of bonds occur. The activation energy is the difference between the activation complex and the reactant energy. It is defined as the energy that must be overcome for reaction to take place. The enthalpy change is the difference between the product energy and the reactant energy. It is also known as the heat change of a chemical reaction.
you can identify a reaction pathway diagram for an exothermic reaction as the energy of the product is lower than the reactants. Take a look at the graph and note the position of the reactant energy level and that of the profit. It is quite different for endothermic reactions. You can identify a reaction pathway diagram for an endothermic reaction as the energy of the product is higher than the reactants. For an exothermic reaction, overall reaction arrow is downwards pointing, showing that the system has lost energy. Since the reaction loses energy, we draw the arrow pointing downwards. However, for an endothermic reaction, overall reaction arrow is upwards pointing, showing that the system has gained energy. So in summary, we have seen that exothermic releases heat energy and result in temperature increase, while endothermic reaction absorbs heat energy and result in temperature decrease.